You want me to put that on my todger? Harry's wife, Magpie Markle. Yes, I've said a bit of her name because it fits with the illiterate description. The Magpie is reputed in European culture, at least, to collect shiny objects such as wedding rings and other valuables, a well-known example being Rossini's opera La Gazzaladra, The Thieving Magpie. Accordingly, it enters into culture and familiarity in Europe for the magpie to be seen as a thief that comes along and takes things that aren't theirs and also that are attracted by shiny things, jewellery, tiaras, for example, those things which lure in the magpie. We know that narcissists take, steal, purloin, commandeer, however you'd like to describe it. This is as a consequence of the sense of entitlement by which the narcissist operates, a lack of accountability for the behaviours, a sense of it's justified. You'll often find with certain fraudsters that, in essence, fraudsters fall into two groups. There are those that are actually motivated by circumstance. And often these are individuals that have emotional empathy, but their straightened circumstances reduces their emotional empathy, causing them to steal. So, for instance, somebody who might be stealing from their employer because her husband has lost his job and they're facing particular financial difficulty, steals. She knows what she's doing is wrong. She feels guilty about doing it, but nevertheless starts doing it because there's been a shift in her circumstances. She could be a narcissist, but is unlikely to be so as a consequence of the experience of guilt and the fact that, given that she hitherto never behaved in such a way, circumstances remove that or reduce that person's emotional empathy, causing them to engage in fraudulent activity. But where you get a narcissist that engages in fraudulent activity is done out of a sense of entitlement. This money belongs to me. If it were not for me, this company would go under. I'm the glue that's holding it together, and they failed to pay me a bonus, so I took this money because it was actually owed to me. I haven't stolen anything. A rampant sense of entitlement. An absence of emotional empathy for those affected by the theft. A lack of boundary recognition. What's yours is mine. Harry's wife is no different. This doesn't necessarily mean that she spends her time going around stealing all things that she lays her hand on, becoming some form of kleptomaniac. But rather, there are repeated instances of stealing in the widest sense being undertaken by her. We know that she walked off with a pair of shoes from the Reitman's shoot. She just took them. There's been suggestions that she's taken the piss when it's come to the claiming of expenses in relation to the Invictus Foundation, the suggestion being that she spent huge amounts on clothing and then has sought to expense it through the foundation, having them bear the burden of it. But it goes beyond this. She has stolen through character trait acquisition so much about Diana, Princess of Wales, her perfume, her mannerisms, the clothing that she wears, the style that she adopted. Harry's wife does this in order to clothe herself, both literally and figuratively, because she is simply empty. She plagiarises the work of others because she sees nothing wrong with doing so, deems that it is appropriate, and invariably her narcissism will blind her to what she has actually done. She is empty. I've described Prince Harry as thick, and she is empty. There is nothing there. There is no substance and in order to make her look like she has substance, her narcissism repeatedly causes her to acquire these character traits from other people, to bolt on the experiences, achievements of others, and pass them off as her own. An example of her doing so is in relation to the quotations that she uses. 
And Underarm Aussie, on the Reddit thread, St. Harry's Wife, but they use her real name, has helpfully pulled together just a few of the examples of Harry's wife engaging in this magpie behaviour of taking the quotes that other people have issued and passing them off as her own with minor adjustments. So, for example, Eleanor Roosevelt once stated, It isn't enough to talk about peace. One must believe in it. And it isn't enough to believe in it. One must work at it. Pinching from that by way of blatant character trait acquisition at a UN Women Conference in 2015, Harry's wife stated, It isn't enough to simply talk about equality. One must believe it. And it isn't enough to simply believe in it. One must work at it. Let us work at it together, starting now. An almost word-for-word lift of what Eleanor Roosevelt stated, and she didn't, of course, give any acknowledgement to Eleanor Roosevelt as she substituted peace for her own supposedly inspiring use of the word equality. Edward Tuft said, There are only two industries that call their customers users, illegal drugs and software. Harry's wife stated, There are very few things in the world where you call the person who's engaging with it a user, people who are addicted to drugs and people on social media. Stephanie Tong wrote in 2016, As I tenderly held my firstborn in my arms, I was saying goodbye to my third. Harry's wife in 2020 stated, I knew as I clutched my firstborn child that I was losing my second. Again, the plagiarism of other words from somebody else relating to the tragedy of losing a child. Of course, having no emotional empathy, she sees nothing wrong with her taking such information and using it for her own purposes. Dr. Jakes and Avery stated in an episode of Grey's Anatomy, we're petrified of saying too much or saying it wrong when the truth is, the only wrong thing you can say is nothing at all. Harry's wife stated, I wanted to say the right thing, and I was really nervous that I wouldn't, and I realised the only wrong thing to say is nothing. Because there is this emptiness of Harry's wife, because she's low cognitive function, and lacks any imagination or inspirational ability. She, like many other narcissists, must go through life taking from elsewhere and passing it off as her own. Many narcissists get away with it, because they do so within smaller circles. But Harry's wife, given the platform that that she occupies, and, of course, the fact that there's a legion of fact-checkers observing what she does, results in this particular issue. Namely, that when she conducts herself by way of character trait acquisition, for that is what it is, she ends up with a scenario whereby her behaviours are exposed, her plagiarism is identified, and it is as a consequence of the character trait acquisition that is part of the prime aims pursued by her narcissism. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.